Hello friends and in this video we are going to talk about uh, Amazon SDK using Java. There are different uh, languages using which you can use Amazon SDK but as discussed earlier that uh, we will be uh, going through the whole series in Java. Okay. So in our previous video we have already seen about uh, Amazon S3 service uh, which is simple storage service and how to just keep create one bucket and upload your files. So as I, as I told you earlier that uh, once we get into any of the services we can start setting up the SDK and we can see because the whole series is all about uh, how to develop uh, using Amazon SDK in Java. Okay, so in this video we are going to talk about uh, getting started with Amazon SDK then creating one starter Spring Boot project using Spring Tool Suites or you can use uh, Eclipse as well. Then setting up the Amazon SDK using Maven. You can use Gradle as well but, but we are going to use Maven here. Then connecting to one AWS services using Java and the only AWS service which we have talked about that is S3. So here we are going to talk about uh, S3 today. Okay, so we will try to connect to S3 using Amazon SDK. So let's get started then. I think uh, you guys are already familiar with this tool. I hope uh, this is nothing but this is uh, Spring Tool Suites, which is a uh, customized version of Eclipse, which comes with uh, different uh, plugins from Spring Boot or Spring applications. Okay. So what I'll be doing is I'll be creating one starter project. Okay, so let's go ahead and create one Spring Starter project, which you can specify group. Let's leave it Spring Boot AWS. Next, keep it. Let's have Spring Web Starter. Even we don't even need that Spring Web, but still let's have it. Okay, so meanwhile it is uh, just setting up the project. Uh, we can go, we can discuss about SDK. Uh, Amazon SDK, they have, uh, let's like to connect to the Amazon Cloud, uh, which is a software development toolkit, right, you know. So if anyone, any third party, whenever they, uh, let's say here Amazon is one of the third party, you can say, and you are going to use their cloud for your development, for your deploying your applications or different services. So you are going to use Java, your application is Java and you are going to deploy that. So definitely they have come up with some tool using which you will be able to connect to the AWS services or AWS account. So that is nothing but the SDK. And this SDK is being developed by Amazon and they have uh, shared with us and we have to use that one to communicate with AWS cloud or AWS account. Okay. So for that, if it is in Java, whatever we have created okay okay so this is we have given AWS but the name Spring Boot demo one okay, let's leave it so so first thing is whenever we in Java whatever all the dependencies right if any third party dependency where do you add it always you add it in pom.xml so let's go to pom.xml if you see all the like whatever the starter we had selected right we have and test by default it came so now if it is SDK, we have to add the Amazon SDK, then we have to add this dependency. Okay, so let's go ahead and add this dependency. But even if after adding this dependency, it is not going to work unless we add the dependency management of AWS. So dependency management also we are going to add so that it is going to fetch all the transitive dependencies required for this dependency. Okay. Let me just format it and let me save it. And then once you save it, this Spring Tool Suites is automatically going to download all those dependencies. So when you expand this one, maybe you can see this AWS Java SDK S3, SDK KMS and SDK Core. So here, if you see all three things but in our dependencies we have mentioned only one 
service which is S3 because there, there are ways where we can even where we can even specify all the dependencies there is something like you can specify like this and it is going to fetch all the dependency but that is not recommended whatever the services you are going to download or whatever the services that you are going to use only those SDK you should add so that your application will be lightweight or else unnecessarily it will be having those dependencies and you are not going to use it so that is of no use so this is something core which is needed and on top of that core we have to have the specific SDK so core is nothing but it deals with uh, credentials, AWS credentials, how to connect to the account, all those things. But this SDK S3, it is only specific for the simple storage service. Okay, so now we have already got the dependencies. That means SDK is set up now. Once SDK is set up, we just need to go ahead and connect to the AWS account, right? So for that we have AWS client which is let me copy that part okay so let's do one thing do a control shift O so that it is going to face those it is going to add those dependencies okay okay so this is where we are going to create the client okay so to create the Amazon S3 client this is very simple and convenient they have designed the API very nice way Amazon S3 client builder dot standard dot build and then S3 client got created now S3 dot list pockets then list of buckets then we are iterating through those bucket we'll go through we'll go through this in our next video maybe we can uh, discuss more on s3 how to create one bucket how to upload few files how to download files all those things okay so let's don't uh, get into that right now we'll have a discussion separately for that one okay now once it is done let me just go ahead and run it run the spring boot application okay so now it is starting the server and here if you see at the end bucket name this is the bucket two three four five there are four five buckets if you remember yesterday we created this one right demo bucket one zero double one bucket owner is null bucket creation date is 10th of June correct so if you want we can go ahead and check that one just to verify it okay so our user is demo user password so once it is logged in then you already know that we need to go to which service s3 then we can see all the buckets here you go these are all the buckets and using our SDK we just printed all those buckets correct so this is how we can connect to AWS account and access different services and for today we just in this example we just saw that we connected to S3 service and we are able to list all the buckets that are available but now you guys might be thinking we did not even specify any credentials over here then how it got connected right because what I did I just created one Spring Boot application then I went to pom.xml here I added the Maven dependency management then did that dependency S3 dependency then I just went ahead and added this line couple of few lines and I am able to list the bucket so here is the credential now so here if you remember guys when we set up our AWS CLI 
that time we saw we did one AWS configure command and we configured all those things and we have seen that during that AWS configure command it is going to create one dot AWS folder in our user directory and it is having two file which is config file and another is credential file and there it is storing all our credential so if you forgot about that let's go ahead let's revise it let's go ahead and check that one okay so if you go here tapas then dot aws here you can see this is the folder okay and inside this folder if you see we have this credential correct so using so what sdk is doing sdk knows that this is the directory structure user slash dot aws this is what the directory structure it is not going to be changed whatever the user directory then slash dot aws that's why it is dot aws which is something special di directory right and the credential file so what aws sdk automatically it is doing is it is reading those credentials from your dot aws directory and connecting to the account okay but you, you might be like thinking if that is the scenario in our real life uh, project and all we connect to multiple environment right we have our development environment we have our sit environment we have our uat environment then we have prod environment so prod is okay prod we are not going to uh, connect from our id but what about sit uat and all those things so each time do i need to go back to dot aws folder change the credentials and then try again it is tedious process right we, we cannot do that because maybe if it re requires i can have three project in my workspace and three different sit uat or i can work on those things so if i'm working on three projects and three projects have their different different aws account then it is not possible so to just cross check that let's do one thing let's edit this one and let's x some add something xyz let's save it go back here and now let's do one thing let's try to run it again okay and let's see if it is failing or not whether it is able to get the list of buckets okay definitely it should fail because that is the only source of credentials no doubt it started but here you see we have got exception in thread main the request signature we calculated doesn't match the signature you provided check your key and signing method service amazon s3 status code 403 error code signature doesn't match clearly it is saying that whatever the signature or whatever the key signature means what we have we have the secret we have the access key id and we have the secret key access right so those two things are not matching okay so this is one way we can create the client and we can communicate with the service okay there is another way let's say if you want to do it programmatically that is also there which is let's talk about that okay okay so there is something called as basic aws credential using which you can instantiate aws creds where the first argument is nothing but the access key id and the second one is secret access key okay so this constructor takes two argument and it is going to create the basic aws credential and while creating this amazon s3 client build builder standard with credential earlier it was client builder dot standard dot build that means that is the default one it will go and look into dot aws but if you are specifying this one 
it is going to take this with credential and AWS static credential provider where you are passing this AWS credential object so that it is going to take precedence and it is going to connect using this access key and secret key ID. There are other credential methods also there. There are, there are AWS session credentials where we can have some session and that time only we'll be able to connect. Okay. So in real time scenarios, we might need those because there we will get some session and if that session is there, that time only we'll be able to connect. So let's try this. Let's go ahead and run this whether we are able to connect or not. Now you see we got all the bucket listed here. That means there are two different ways of connecting to AWS account. So based upon your requirement, if you are working on only one AWS account, you guys can go with go ahead with the default one. But ideally, what you have to do is you have to create one like you might be working on three four. AWS accounts and maybe SIT, UAT and that time you need to have this key and and this key we have hard coded here which we are not going to do it with what we have to do ideally here we need to create one file that is application dot yml okay then maybe we can specify the profile let's say we say prod or we'll say dev and then we can just refactor rename it to application hyphen dev so that spring boot is directly going to take it from here and here you can specify access key and secret access key and you can just read that one based on the active profile let's say like this you will have another file call let's say we'll give uh, application hyphen prod dot properties so here you can specify access key and secret key for fraud in this property file you can specify access key and product for fraud and in your code you are going to there is no change in code, no hard coding. Based on the profile, automatically it is going to take that access key and it can connect, which you can do it. And ideally, in ideal scenario, definitely you are going to do that. So guys, we have seen how to set up SDK and it's very simple. You have seen there is nothing, just you need to add that dependency to your pom.xml. You need to add the dependency management. Then all the AWS necessary dependencies will be pulled in then you just need to create the AWS client, S3 client builder and you just either way you can just create the client then whatever the services, let's say these things we are going to talk more about these things in our later video. So this video was only for how to set up AWS SDK in Java. So, you, so if you guys have not yet uh, subscribed to my channel, please do subscribe it so that you will get notified and if you are interested to learn AWS in Java. So we are going to discuss more on S3, next part is EC2, next is uh, simple notification service, simple queue service, then RDS, all those things. Okay, so to whatever the, I am trying to create these videos wherever all we will touch uh, all those services whatever the important services and of course lambda also we are going to see so again guys if you have not yet subscribed so please do subscribe so that you will get notified and if you have any queries or comment please uh, do post it and we can definitely discuss about that thanks for watching the video